there guys, welcome back to the D-Time Love Show. You join me two weeks into lockdown, I'm too so heavier, and my new best friend is my fridge, I have to say. But anyway, enough of me ranting about my miseries and about the world. Let's get into the latest watch industry news. No surprise, breaking news. Tudor, Rolex, Patek Philippe have postponed the announcement of all their brand new releases for 2020 until 2021. No surprise with Basel World uh, postponing the event this, this summer to January, I believe the 27th next year. It wasn't a surprise to anybody as Patek Philippe, Rolex and Tudor really do steal the show. But don't be surprised if there is a U-turn. If there is a U-turn in the pandemic, we could see a few announcements just before the end of the summer, I've been told as well. Or they'll be giving us a few sneak previews of what might be coming. But anyway, I want to do some real watch talk with you guys today. I'm going to do some questions. Apologies if I haven't got back to you yet. I have not been ignoring you. Um, I get so many questions and I try to either answer them directly by email, via Instagram or via the comments in on the videos. But um, let's go through the first question in the hand and it's from one of my subscribers, a guy called Silverback. So I guess you are some sort of Silverback male, alpha male. Very nice um, name there, sir. But um, nice video. This this comment was based on the True the Black Bay, I believe, the unboxing or review. I can't remember now. But um, it's that nice video. Is the bezel easy to scratch? Question mark. Have to decide between this or the new Omega Seamaster 300. Thank you. Well, Silverback, thank you, sir, for watching. First of all, appreciate the support on the channel. And um, look, I've been wearing the True the Black Bay today and I thought I'd share it with you. I'm not wearing a watch today, I'll share it with Mr. Silverback. Now, um, is the bezel easy to scratch? Well, look, it's an aluminium bezel, so it's common sense. It's not gonna be as robust or scratch resistant as the ceramic bezel on the Seamaster. But to my surprise, I wear this watch on a regular basis. I wouldn't say it's a daily wearer for myself, but it could get two to four days wrist time a week. And I've knocked it about a few times, but it's a solid piece, it really is. The bezel is not, it's in pretty immaculate condition. But I really look after my watches. I'm very careful, to be honest with you. So if you are somebody who is going to wear it every day to work, you know, manual, manual label, whatever it may be that you're doing, you might be better off with the Omega Seamaster uh, Professional, the, the brand new model with the ceramic bezel, uh, but look, I'm going to be honest with you, even the ceramic, if you knock it hard, it will chip and crack, but it's far more scratch resistance. Um, but what I would say about the true though, look, if you were to knock it about, um, you could get you could get it replaced quite easily. I don't think it costs you an arm and a leg. I'm sure the ceramic bezel will be a lot more expensive than the aluminium bezel. But for me, you know, it comes down to which watch will give you more pleasure on the wrist and off the wrist you know really i suggest going looking at both pieces you know or maybe go to an authorized dealer that has both the tudor and the omega there where you can compare the two that would be probably the best bet for you have a look get a feel for the watch how does it make you feel can you enjoy the watch without wearing the watch as well you know is it a good fit as well, you know, the new Omega Seamaster is a little bit bigger than the old one as well, a bit thicker um, as well. But the new Truder within House Movement is thicker as well. Just check it out, wear it, see how you feel. Um, I do like the Omega, the new Omega Seamaster. It's grown on me. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Omega Seamaster Electric Blue that I did let go. Unfortunately, I, I did prefer that Wave Doll, but I have to admit, the new Omega Seamaster is, is an excellent watch. and. In some things, it's superior to the Tudor, you could say, because of the ceramic bezel. Um, it's got a higher water resistance, death rating of 300 meters. The Tudor's 200 meters water resistant. Um, unless you go through the Pelagos and you've got ceramic bezel, you know, 500 meters water resistant. 
Um, but what I would say to you is this though, the Tudor is a total different aesthetic. Um, it's got that vintage vibe of, you know, former Rolex subs and old Tudor subs with that patina dial. It's a very cool, interesting watch. It's a whole different type of watch um, compared to the Seamaster, which is quite clinical, uh, very crisp in its execution. I'm not saying that the Tudor isn't, it's absolutely executed perfectly. But both of them feel like very premium watches. And to be honest with you, you can't go wrong with either. Just go with the one that you, you like the most, um, to be fair, sir. But once again, thank you for watching. Next question from Frank Confidential, Frank. So, excellent name, uh, Frank. Um, question. Now, this is from Frank. Uh, do you have the new BMW 3 Series or 5 Series? Noticed your photo on Instagram and I love the Truda Monte Carlo combo. Uh, by the way, I've been following your channel for over two years and wanted to reach out to you during these tough times. Please let me know what made you make that purchase as I'm a love cars and I love wristwatches. Well, first of all, Frank, um, it is the G30, which is the new BMW 5 Series, um, 530i M Sports. Um, yeah, I bought it because it's comfortable. It's a, it's quite a sporty executive sedan. It's a bit of a grand cruise, I would say. It's not super fast. It's not slow either. It pretty much ticks every box for me. It really is a tech fest, I have to say, and hence why I went for that car. I'm a family man, so, you know, I can't really have a two-door car. I need something that ticks off all the boxes. And I have to say the BMW G30 in M Sport mode really does that for me. Great comfort. Um, acceleration is, is relatively good um, for the size of the engine. And it's a real tech fest. And I thoroughly enjoy the car. And I do say, I have to say, it does really go with the Tudor Chrono Blue, aka Monte Carlo, just the BMW logo and the Tudor. I don't know. I like to match my my cars with the watches. I've always been a Mercedes man over the years. Um, I've had VWs as well and some other, other luxury brands. It's my second BMW that I've ever had. So, um, but if you're gonna get a BMW, you might as well get one of the better ones. The G30 for me, it's a large car, uh, but it drives uh, a lot smaller, which is nice. So you get the benefit of more interior space, better boot space. Um, it, the chassis is absolutely brilliant, 50-50 weight distribution. It's got the integral steering as well, so you get four-wheel steering. So if you're turning left, I believe the, the other tyres turn right as well, or the left, I don't know, to be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, the spec sheet is really good. And, uh, yeah, I love the car, really nice. But thank you, sir, for watching, and uh, thank you for your question, and thank you for supporting the channel for two years. I really appreciate the support. Keep watching and recommend me to your friends and any watch fans. All right, brilliant stuff. Next question is from Elliot Rooney. What do you think about the Tudor, the Tudor Chrono SNG and the Omega Speedmaster? I'm trying to choose between the two. Um, and I'm assuming the Omega Speedmaster Professional um, because you've listed it down at 3,000. 3,600 so I guess yeah that will be the professional uh, which is the better choice and why as I'm looking to add my first chrono to my collection well I've done a video on this actually uh, but I'll do a bit of a recap on probably the best chronos you can get for around about the 5k mark for example and um, yeah you're on the right path that's for sure those two watches are excellent choices you know I absolutely love the, the Truda Chrono SMG, I think it's brilliant. It's got a Paul Newman vibe about it. Um, two Tonys back, big time. Uh, but I love that. For me, uh, I wasn't sure for, in relation to the photographs of the SMG, but when you see it in real life, it, it's stunning. It really is a beautiful watch. And um, for the price, you're not going to get a better two-tone for that price, even at £5,200, whatever the cost is in the UK, pound sterling. Um, but with the current market situation, you probably could get a relatively reasonable discount on that. I know Tudor don't discount massively, um, but get the one that you prefer. You know, have a look, 
which one gives you most wrist pleasure and pleasure when it's not on your wrist as well that you can just hold and look at and they give you that pleasure for me if it was me uh, I would buy the Tudor Chrono SNG because I think it's a stunning piece uh, you're getting that Rolex DNA it's got a Paul Newman vibe about it I think it's absolutely stunning and uh, that would be my personal choice why no release as well um, and two tone is back and I think it's a sexy looking watch and that would be my choice but there's nothing wrong with the Speedmaster I would say if you didn't want to go two tone you wanted just a steel watch um, the Speedmaster is a good choice you've got the Truder Chrono in steel but um, if you didn't want to go new retail you could go use and get a Breguet Type 20 you know for that sort of money around the four four and a half thousand pounds sterling mark for 2020 that's that's a brilliant watch you know that, that's a stunning piece um that it's a breguet at the end of, end of the day but it really depends what you want but if it was me i'd go for the tudor i am a tudor fan so i'm a little bit biased i do love my tudors but i am an omega fan as well so um i've had a few speedies but the speed speed master's a beautiful watch it really is You've also got bright lens you can look at, you know, the Navitimer. It, it depends what you want. But for me, out of those two, I would go for the Truda uh, Chrono SNG because I just love the way it looks. It's anything that's got a Paul Newman vibe for me, it wins my heart straight away. And I am a bit of a two tone fan as well. Um, next question Do you still own the Below the Curve, sir? I do, and I've got it out for you. Um, you want to remain confidential. You were wondering how the watch has fared over time. And uh, yeah, it's fared very well. You know, the, the bracelet, the case, this gunmetal version, good choice. I don't wear it much, to be honest. It's not a very versatile piece. Below the curve with the ultra high frequency movement, first curved chronograph watch. When it first came out, they were retailed about 699. They've now gone down the price retail is five nine nine six four five depending where you're buying the watch but you can get them used for that 350 400 pounds immaculate condition ones with a lot of wear and tear you're probably looking at 250 350 so great buy really great buy uh potentially a modern modern classic from belova as well but you guys have been asking me sorry guys um, what other hobbies you have? Well, I'm into my gaming. I love my cars, and I'm not in terms of EDC everyday carry. I'm not a massive knife uh, enthusiast, but I do have a couple of knives that I do enjoy as well. And uh, you wanted me to share them with you. And the first one is a Wolf knife, and let's just open this for you guys. Now I haven't really popped these out for a while, but um, look at that absolutely stunning and i believe this is some sort of hunting knife so you can gut you know whatever you've just hunted deer or hare or pheasant or partridge um but um it's just a beautiful piece of art i have to say but extremely sharp i have to say and that, that those are one of my knives i do have these loads of swiss army knives people tend to buy me them for christmas all the time and the other one um i don't know if i've ever shared this with you guys before um, Anglo Arms Amazon Knife Kit and uh, it's a camo knife so you get a Swiss camo type knife very good quality the fill of it is great but the party trick is this bad boy check that out look at that very nice indeed and with the lockdown you never know what you might need <laughs> during these tough times but god forbid I'd ever have to use a knife on anybody I am um, you know but um yeah that's it you know that there is my Rambo knife I'm not a massive knife guy I'm gonna be honest with you I'm not you know everyday carry yeah I, I do like looking at people's EDC carry it's interesting um, I don't go camping or anything like that so um but I do have a few knives because I, I like them you know I'm a guy I like cars I like <laughs> everything that a male should like that is for sure but uh Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's Real Watch Talk. 
Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Press that like button if you like the content. And um, don't forget to catch me in my next video. Take care, guys, and I'll see you soon and keep safe.